offering the caller an option to be called back either by holding their place in the queue or by offering them a time uh, window in which the call will be returned. So this is implemented in the contact center. Uh, you might uh, go ahead and create a menu where you play some options to the caller. Uh, press 1 for a callback. Uh, you get your callback icon here by right clicking in the white space and selecting uh, click callback. Uh, if you prefer you can go over to the uh, menu here and just go ahead and drag out onto the screen. But uh, what we're going to do here is look at the individual components of the callback script. Now there are four tabs that define that icon. Get destination, get time, your ending, and your hang up. Get destination uh, is going to be required in both applications, right? So you will need to create some custom WAV files. Here uh, is where the prompt will be played that says, thanks uh, for requesting a callback. Please enter your telephone number, uh, 10 digits, area code first. That's a WAV file you're going to have to create. It's not provided by the system. Uh, at that point, the system will prompt the caller to enter their digits. You're looking for either 10 digits. You can select a variable number of digits. Your prompt can say enter the pound sign when you're done. But generally, with the North American numbering plan, you're going to request 10 digits. You'll give them some number of retries, and you will set the time out um, should they not enter anything. Then you're offered the opportunity to announce the destination. Again, you will need to create your own WAV file. The number you entered is, and the system will then read the number. The actual digits are played by system prompts, but this prompt here, the number you entered is, needs to be recorded uh, by your team. Customer feedback prompt, uh, this is where you might say um, the number you entered was it plays the number, and here you're going to say press 1 to confirm or 2 to change. And you can set your digits here uh, to match that prompt. The next thing you're going to do, only if you want to offer them the opportunity to be called back at a future time, you will then prompt for get time. If you want to hold your place in queue, do not fill this part in. Uh, you learn this by experience. I don't think I've ever seen this in Shortel documentation, but the get time means this call is going to be scheduled. If you don't fill this in, it means as soon as this guy hangs up, put his phone number in the queue and the next available agent will handle it. At any rate, get time, you have the option to call back a particular time or over a period of time, and your prompt to the caller should reflect that. Again, this is a prompt that uh, you need to uh, record. You can record a timeout prompt, an error prompt. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Please re-enter it. Uh, the number of times you'll retry and the timeout value. Do we want to announce to the caller uh, what he entered for a time? Uh, here, we'll go ahead and prompt the number you entered is, and then ask them if they want to confirm or change it. Lastly, uh, we may want to play a thank you very much, we'll follow up as soon as possible, uh, or a scheduled prompt. This again needs to be recorded by you, and then we're going to hang up and continue. So that's pretty much how you set up the callback. Again, two options. Hold my place in queue by not filling in the gate get time function or offering them a scheduled uh, time in which this will return the call.